welcome to Youth Voices of Greater Cincinnati. We are eighth graders at Norwood Middle School. My name is Shiley Cruz and my partner name is Rainier Oglesby. Today we have a very special guest named Mr. Sato Gatka. What was it like to grow up in the U.S. as a Japanese American? Well, you know, because I grew up in Hawaii, it's still, it wasn't even a state back when I was born and raised there earlier. It was just a territory. But there's a lot of Japanese people in Hawaii. They were when I was growing up. So I was raised in a Japanese culture, mostly. Hawaii used to be a territory, but now it's a state. Have you been back there? And if you have, has it change at all? Uh, it's gotten more international. Uh, yeah, I think that's the main thing. It's gotten more international and they get tourists from all over now, you know. But I don't know if it has to do with being a state. Can you tell us about uh, your schooling in Hawaii? In Hawaii, up to junior high school, it was very segregated. I had a lot of friends and they were mostly Japanese. So when you came like to the USA for college at Architect, was it different seeing people that were, weren't like you? A different yeah, person? Yeah, no, there were enough different people in Hawaii, but my community was mostly Asian or Japanese people. Uh, when I went to the mainland my first year, I went to school in Oregon. And because it was on the West Coast, there were enough Asian people from Hawaii, so we used to get together and everything like that. And then I went to school in Minnesota, of all places, and I was unique. There weren't that many Asian people in Minnesota. Did people ask you a lot of questions about where you're from? And yeah, and I looked different from everybody, you know, because there weren't that many Asian people there. But that at first I thought maybe it was going to be a negative thing, but it made me see myself as an individual first, and hopefully that'll help you guys, if you're not already that way, seeing yourself as being different. But even if you're different, it's a positive difference. It's not s something negative. Uh, the problem when I was growing up, now it's changing, but when I was growing up, the problem is if you are in a culture where there's enough of your, like for example, Japanese people that, uh, they become people's, other people see you as, as a threat because there are so many, you know. Mm -hmm. They're not used and to you. You see, you know what I'm talking about? Yeah. And so going somewhere where I'm an individual, I wasn't a threat to them at all. I, it was more something they want to learn. They were cur curious about where you came from. Yeah. And, the way I thought and everything. And they realize I'm just like them. You know, we're all pretty much the same. Have you ever faced racism? Because I know sometimes in my family, because I'm Hispanic, yeah. people, because my dad's, because people stare, have stereotypes on like Hispanic people are like dark, yeah. have like black hair, but my dad's like really light skin. So most people just go, just think that he's Caucasian mm -hmm. and, and don't think that he's any, I don't, don't think that he's um, Mexican because yeah, of that. Yeah, I probably did, but I wasn't that conscious of it, I think. Uh, you didn't pay that much attention to I it. I didn't pay that much attention to it. And if anything like that happens, I usually just joke about it rather than trying to take it seriously, you know, uh, because it's their problem. It's not my problem, you know. Uh, but I think... The younger generation, 
the people are getting more accepting in general and they are starting to accept diversity more. I noticed when I went to your class, there's so much cultural mix. Uh, and you don't realize that, but other communities are not like that. You know, they're more segregated. I like to see like different people from different cultures around. It's like, I'm like, oh, that's cool. Or that's different. Or I want to learn about that. Yeah. And you get to meet new people. Yeah. You get to meet new people. And you guys are all accepting of each other. Are you happy seeing like people are like accepting other people for who they are and their culture? Definitely. Not only different cultures accepting each other, but male and females, the mm -hmm. sex accepting each other. Because, I mean, it's terrible still in terms of the fact that women get paid less for the same job. It should be equal, you know. And uh, not only with, with that, but religion, too. Do you think it's good for kids to op to learn about different cultures around the world? Oh, it's very important. Yeah, I think whether you travel or not, you know, in a lot of situations, it's, it's expensive to travel all over the place, but you can get that on the internet and from books and stuff like that. So I read a lot, you know, uh, about different cultures. And it's very interesting to me. And I watch, well, especially now with television and Netflix and all that kind of stuff, you know, there's so many ways you can learn about other cultures. Uh, but there's nothing better to actually go there uh, and meet the people and stuff like that. Can you speak Japanese? Ah, uh, hi, Nihongo Wakarimas means, yes, I speak Japanese. Did, did you? Uh... And wait a minute, one more thing. Sukoshi means a little bit. <laughs> okay. okay. Did, did you learn that? And my dad was born in Hawaii, but was raised in Japan. And then he came back to Hawaii to work. My mom was born and raised in Hawaii. They were both Japanese. So when I was growing up, my dad spoke more Japanese than English. So I learned both languages, you know. Uh, and... Uh, you know, being in a culture where there's a lot of Japanese people, we all learn a lot of Japanese. Oh, and another thing is, after the regular English school, we went to Japanese school. We had an hour of Japanese school every day after English school. So I learned more Japanese that way too. My dad was born in Mexico and stuff. So when I came to school, my Spanish got really bad. Does that ever happen to your like Japanese? Well, after you don't use it for a while, you know, it, it gets worse and then you try to learn it again, you know. But you still remember a lot of stuff, I think. Uh, but of course, if you don't speak it every day, it's, it, it doesn't stick in your head as much. Have you ever traveled to Japan? I've only been to Japan once, and that was when I was already an adult. But I really enjoyed it a lot. Uh, the interesting thing is one day I was walking down the street and because I looked Japanese, this Japanese guy came up to me and asked me for directions. <laughs> and I said to him, Nihonjin wakarimas, wakarimasen, which means I don't understand Japanese people Whereas what I wanted to see was say was Nihongo Wakarimasen. In other words, I don't understand Japanese language. <laughs> so it's, it was embarrassing for me. You know, he just walked away like, you don't understand Japanese people. <laughs> was Japan different from what you were used to in Hawaii? A little bit, just because of the language and everything about and all of that, but the weird thing, and it's all over the world, it seems like, there were so many Kentucky Fried Chicken and McDonald's in Japan. 
<laughs> yeah, so there was a lot of American stuff there. Did you feel like people treat you like like them, like not different? No, yeah, exactly. Because they, I look like them, you know. So that's that's the difference, I think. Even if I spoke, well, most of them I can understand Japanese, but it's hard to speak it. Yeah, it's hard to speak it sometimes, especially in the way they speak it, you know. <laughs> And of course, if they think you're Japanese, they're gonna speak to you very quickly, like you know what, exactly what they're saying. But can you tell us how you became an artist? Uh, I think I was interested in art way at the beginning and everything. I like to draw, and developing my art didn't come until later, and seeking it as a career kind of a thing didn't come until later. Was there anyone? that motivate you to do, to do art as like a parent or relative? No, it's mostly the culture, the Japanese culture and uh, art and architecture and stuff like that. Actually, when I first started school in college, I was, I went into architecture first and then I switched into what's called graphic design. In my profession as a graphic designer, I was painting and everything. I've always been interested in art, but I've developed <clears throat> my interest in art since I've uh, semi-retired and started painting full time. And I wanted to get back to my Japanese cultures too. So that's why I started to do Japanese calligraphy. And then, of course, I wanted to draw a relationship between the Western painting that I was doing and the Japanese calligraphy. And so that, that's how I uh, develop everything that I'm doing now in terms of the spontaneity and not copying other people's work, but learning. It, it's important to learn from and constantly, not 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 stop your learning process once you work and you get out of school. Were your family supportive of you pursuing this career? My parents, I was the first generation that went to college. You know, they didn't go to college, so they wanted us. I have a brother and a sister. They wanted us all to go to college and graduate. And they wanted, of course, in those days, they wanted me to pursue a occupation that I could make money to make a living, you know. Uh, that was their main concern. Uh, they weren't concerned whether I was going to be an architect or an engineer, just as long as I pursued an occupation where I could make enough money to make a living. Was it hard to make a living off of this? It wasn't hard being a graphic designer. It was an occupation, and I did that until I retired, semi-retired or retired. Uh, it's harder now trying to be a painter uh, and uh, a calligrapher. Uh, but because I'm semi-retired, I'm, I'm not too concerned about that. I'm still a little concerned about it. Do you think there's a difference in Japanese art and American art? There are some difference, but there's a lot of similarities, and that's what I'm trying to do in my art is draw a relationship between, mainly between uh, Western painting and Japanese calligraphy. And in both of them, modern Western painting and Japanese calligraphy, spontaneity is very important and seeking your own style is very important. So that's that's what I'm trying to draw a relationship there. You guys, do you guys use different tools than the tools we use in America? Mm -hmm. Do you use different tools than like paint brushes and things yeah, like that? Yeah, yeah, I use all of it. I use Western brush and palette knife and I paint mainly in acrylic paint. I use Japanese brushes and Japanese inks. Are the formulas different, like the inks, because you said that you use Japanese inks for that. Is it different than the inks we have here? The acrylic is different because the acrylic is, it's still water-based, but when it dries, it's hard. Mm -hmm. Whereas the Sumi Japanese ink 
when it dries, it, it's not hard. It's, if you put water on it, it, it you know, smears and stuff okay. like that. Were there ever times where you thought you couldn't do this anymore? No, I don't think I ever did. I had enough confidence, so it was more exploring than anything else. And pretty much from the beginning, I never thought of art as being something that there's a right way and a wrong way. It's a matter of exploring. And that's the fun part I think I like about it. As you got older, has pe different artists teaches you different te techniques, techniques? Yeah, I, I, learned, I learned by reading about different people's techniques, but the whole point of learning from other people's techniques is how I'm going to integrate that into my own painting rather than just copying it. Okay, that's, that's really important. Just don't think of copying something. I mean, you can, but think about how you can learn from it and adapt it to whatever you're doing. And make your own unique way. Yeah, exactly, exactly. And that's what I teach. I teach art and that's what I try to teach people. Thank you so much for watching. Until next time.